really not sure where this uh, suggestion that the Dallas Cowboys are lying about free agency is coming from. It seems to me they're doing exactly what they said they were going to do. It's just that we don't like it. Maybe we like this. How about the Cowboys chasing Jason Pierre-Paul? Let's start at the start of this and this will get into the lying portion of the program. The Cowboys told us without telling us that they don't like Amari Cooper. They're, they've told us without telling us they don't like Lyle Collins. They are not lying to us about their salary cap intentions. They told us they prioritized Randy Gregory, and then they did, but then they lost him. And then they told me, anyway, that even though we're signing Dorrance Armstrong, I saw somebody write, so Dorrance Armstrong and Tank Lawrence are the starting defensive ends, huh? And by the way, they told us they were going to work with Tank Lawrence and make something happen, and they did. And I think one of the newspapers wrote, so the starting defensive ends are Tank Lawrence and Dorrance Armstrong. And I asked somebody at the Star about that, and he's like, we're, we're not done. We're not done on pass rushers yet. The Randy Gregory thing didn't work. We're not done. I've talked about go get a $14 million pass rusher. Well, what if you go get two $7 million pass rushers? Is that okay? You, you don't have to love it, but it's not a lie. So they said we're not done chasing pass rushers. So far, so true. They signed Dante Fowler, who was not in their plans going into free agency because Randy Gregory was going to eat up all that money. Now Dante Fowler gets some of it. You don't love what Dante Fowler has done in the, his last couple of years in Atlanta. It didn't work. You surely love the fact that he was the third overall player taken in his draft, that he has a deep friendship and relationship with Dan Quinn, the Cowboys defensive coordinator, who pushed for this. Again, yeah, Dan Quinn didn't push for Dante Fowler three weeks ago. He pushed for him after the Randy Gregory thing collapsed. And he was told to give a review by his bosses, asked for a review, and he said he can roll. Plenty of gas left in the tank. So that's his Dante Fowler review. You don't have to like it, but it's not a lie. What happened with Randy Gregory? You don't have to like it, but the details of what's in his contract is not a lie. Now comes word that the wish list might include Jason Pierre-Paul. Late, of course, of Tampa Bay. And the Giants before that. Infamous because of the fireworks problem. But he was a premium pick with the Giants, won a Super Bowl, won another Super Bowl in Tampa Bay. Now he's 33. How good did Tampa Bay think he was two years ago? They gave him a two-year, $27 million deal. They gave him $14 million a year two years ago at age 31. Played in 12 games last year, three sacks. That's his lowest number in forever. But the year before, he had nine and a half sacks. And from 2017 to 2020, he was an eight-sack guy every year. One of the most consistent sack guys in the NFL. Get you eight to ten sacks every year. We are told that the reason that he didn't put up numbers last year is because he was playing with a torn-up shoulder. And indeed, he recently had surgery on the shoulder. And then he put on social media, watch me kill bleep when I get back. I'm saying it now. I told you so. So he's predicting at age 33, he's going to come back for more and be fine. Sport, uh, spot track, market value, projected contract, 10 million annually times two. Spot track says somebody's going to out there give him a two year deal for $20 million. That probably won't be Dallas. Again, you don't have to like it, but it's not a lie. I don't think Dallas is going to go out there and buy. Uh, and buy $10 million defensive ends who are 33 years old. I don't think. 
Maybe they would have done that on Von Miller, although they never ever even gave an offer, in my understanding. They never actually put something on paper. They just kind of talked. Uh, there, there's homework to be done on JPP's shoulder, just like there's homework to be done on Zadarius Smith's back. How is that back? Another guy that the league thinks is a $12 million a year player. As we speak here now, he still hasn't signed anywhere. JPP, two years, $20 million seems too pricey for what Dallas is trying to do. You don't have to like it, but it's not a lie. He has been good with the Bucks, dating all the way back to 2018, and he was good before that. I'm betting that Dallas would like to avoid a long-term commitment here, but stockpiling pass rushers at the right price, Randy Gregory or not, that's always a positive cowboy idea. And short-term at the right money. Because listen, you want the Cowboys to spend their money. You don't want them to overspend on JPP, right? You want them to get it get them at the right price. As I've said here, I do think there's something to be said for overspending at the beginning of free agency because that's when the best players are being spent on. The bargain basement, lower bottom of the bin, the people, people, all teams buy from the lower part of the bin in week three. The third wave of free agency, all teams buy those guys. But to get the best guys, you got to do it at the start of free agency. The Cowboys thought they were getting the best guy with Randy Gregory. It didn't fall through. So now they plow forward. They bring back Leighton Van Der Esch on the cheap, one year. They bring in Dante Fowler. I don't know the number yet, but certainly on the cheap, short term. James Washington, wide receiver, surely on the cheap, short term. Don't have to like it, but it's not a lie. We will keep you posted on the Cowboys pass rush pursuits, including JPP. What's his number? What's the rest of the league's interest level in a 33-year-old? And as a guy who surely going forward can at least be a spot player as a pass rusher. And also, he's made his money. He's got a taste of Super Bowls twice. Obviously, he'd like that taste again. That's got to be on his list of things to do. We will continue to pursue the JPP story to find out how high he is on the Cowboys wish list. Fish out.